Hey everybody and welcome to the 23rd episode of Brent Ewing's Hey Buddy Podcast and week 7 of the Michigan Football Big Ten Football Podcast. Well that week is finally upon us, the the week of the game. I remember being a kid and, and being excited about the Ohio State-Michigan game every year and and now uh, what I wouldn't give to have that feeling back. Um, obviously this year the circumstances are a little bit different. Uh, we're not even sure if the game's going to be played or not. Uh, we discussed that a little bit in the podcast obviously. But uh, yeah, it's that week, man. I, I miss the I miss the rivalry. Unfortunately, this rivalry has been, uh, you know, kind of erased basically and taken down just tr- to a tradition now. Uh, the rivalry's really it's lost. I mean, it's and I don't see it getting back on track anytime soon. Unfortunately, uh, hopefully it will because obviously it's better for for football when it's it's two teams that uh, you know are competing for that Big Ten title at the end of the year and and when both teams are strong, obviously. The last two decades, Ohio State has been ridiculously strong. Uh, Michigan, not so much. They've had a few years mixed in there, but overall, the last last couple couple decades have been have been pretty rough. So obviously, we're going to talk about you know our predictions for the game. If the game's even played, um, big COVID outbreak at Michigan here this last week. They had to cancel the game against Maryland. Uh, so we'll see if the game's even played. But obviously, we discussed that. We go over last week's Big Ten scores. Ohio State's big win over you know a, a Michigan State team. Um, I throw out some crazy recruiting stats, uh, comparing some of the best teams in the country to Michigan uh, over the past six years since Harbaugh got in, you know, got the got the job there in Ann Arbor. So we also touch on some Michigan basketball. So without further ado, here is Week Seven of Michigan Football Big Ten Football Podcast with my co-host Bub Dunn. This week, obviously, no game, so it kind of it kind of felt good to not be disappointed for yeah. a weekend. Um, but on the other hand, yeah. it's like, man, I, I miss seeing the guys play. Like, I'd rather, wa- I'd rather watch them play and lose than go a weekend without football, you know? Yeah, I agree. I hate watching. I, I even hate bye weeks, you know, when, when they don't play because it's just like, man, I, I wish they didn't have bye weeks. I wish they just played but straight through. Of, that way I didn't have, to, didn't have to worry about not, you know, a week where they don't play. But Right, and they've kind of had six bye weeks this year, to be honest. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I actually have kind of like, obviously, other than yesterday, um, being able to watch them every single week without a, a, a game that's not on. But um, eh, it is what it is. Yeah, it, felt, it did feel a little bit weird. Uh, you know, yeah. with obviously the, the Maryland game got canceled because of a couple positive tests. Uh, last I heard, they had at least 12 positive tests. So, you know, the status of this week's game – against Ohio State and Columbus is still kind of in flux. I haven't heard anything specific. I'm, I'm guessing we won't until maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, I figure so. I figure they'll try to wait until about the last minute before they really make that decision, obviously because they want to give as much time in between to, to allow for you know the game to be be able to be played. For sure, for sure. And I, I saw there was some controversy. I didn't read exactly – all of Harbaugh's word or Harbaugh, I'm sorry, Herb Street's words the other day, but I'm sure you saw this report too, where Herb Street came out and basically said, you know, Michigan's probably going to wave the white flag and not even want to play. And Ward Manuel, you know, his credit, he ripped uh, Herb Street in the, in the retort, man, talking about, you know, that's ridiculous. Our guys are here to play. You know, it's, it's like this word spoken by a fool and to Herb Street's credit, he came back and apologized, but just ridiculous. You don't say stuff like that, you know, come out. These kids are trying yeah, are, are are they down this year? They they playing pretty badly. Yeah, but you know they don't want to. They don't want to wave the white flag. This might be the only time certain kids in that program get to play in this game. So you know they want to play. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, I, you know Herb Street. He's going. He's going to be Herb Street. Uh, my opinion on him varies at, at certain times. Um, obviously, you know, he uh, he may favor a certain school other than other than a different one, but. Um, He's just Herb Street, and for him to, you when you're on the radio, the radio, the TV, everything, when you're in that position, you, in my opinion, you got to watch what you say. You know, just don't don't come out and say something and then apologize for it because I'm sorry, I, I don't accept your apology. If you if you said it, you meant to say it, right. or you wouldn't have said it to begin with. So don't don't come out and say something and oh I'm sorry I you know I shouldn't have said it well then don't just just don't say it don't even go there to begin with. right right and that, I feel the right. same way kind of about Golick the week before when Golick was saying things about the uncertainty of the program is Harbaugh even going to mm-hmm. be here it's like dude the recruits are watching recruits are listening that's going to put right. you know and and they already know that they already know that you know there's some turmoil there but 
don't come out and say it and, and reaffirm that and, and try to plant seeds. You know, you can't do that kind of thing. You got to stay un impartial, un unbiased. And you just kind of, like you said, you have to watch your tongue a little bit. Yeah. Especially when you're in that position, uh, you, you said it best. You in that, when you're in that position, you have to be as unbiased as you can be mm -hmm. because your job is to deliver the news and deliver scores. And yeah, you can have your opinion on, on, on how it get what you think think a game is going to, you know, how a game's going to go, but don't, don't take, don't play favorites and don't take sides when you're in those types of positions. Unfortunately, with the, with the game being canceled, it solidifies our first, you know, non-win home season ever. So no wins at the big house this year. That's never happened, you know, in the 140 year, 140 plus year, you know, history of Michigan football. So that's kind of, uh, that kind of is not a record you want to, you want to break. Yeah, that's, uh, that's 2020 in a nutshell right there. <laughs> it really is. It really is, man. And, and, and again, it's, it's, I, I would have rather see him play and lose than not to see him play. I just, I hated that, you know, I worked all day on Saturday, so I didn't get to watch any big 10 games. Um, that's why when I go through them today, I'm just going to kind of, we'll touch a little bit on the scores and, and some of the stats, but I didn't get a chance to yeah, watch well, any. I, I'm right there with you. I was on call this weekend. So I, uh, Casey had a basketball game yesterday and then I ended up having to drive to, uh, into Kentucky for, I mean, I, I left, Four, four, now it's about five o'clock, and I didn't get home until ten thirty last night. So wow. I, I really didn't get to watch much of anything either. No kidding, man. Uh, Long gonna, day. We're going to be going on, uh, you know, scoring reports and, and stats. Yeah, and For honestly, man, part, honestly, today I'm not even going to touch on a whole lot of that stuff. There, there's, there's one thing uh, I looked up some, um, some stats and recruiting numbers. I, I want to kind of go in depth over, and then we'll talk about you know yeah. some Michigan foot or some Michigan basketball. Uh, but we'll, you know, it'll be a little bit shorter episode today. So. But let's let's hop right into into the into the Big Ten. You know, you had another game canceled. You had Northwestern Minnesota, same thing. They they ended up canceling their game due to the obviously the COVID outbreak and that that kind of thing. But everybody else played. Had Penn State picking up their second second win of the year over Rutgers, beat them twenty three seven. Nebraska picked up their second win over Purdue thirty seven twenty seven. Iowa, man, Iowa keeps rolling. They've won five in a row. They're playing pretty well. Of course, they played an Illinois team that's you know that's now two and I think two and four. Um, but they rolled them 35-21. And a little bit yeah. of a, a little bit of a shocker with with Penix going down. I thought Indiana was in some trouble. Um, but man, they went into Madison and just they held Wisconsin in check. They beat Wisconsin at home 14 to 6. kind of shocking. I'll, uh, yeah, but, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, that was the one that was the game I took on our big card. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we 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 uh for people who do obviously the bets and stuff, we, uh, me and some friends, we do a card. There's four, we pick four games. There's four of us, so we each pick one game, and we each put ten bucks on it. And you know, is what it is. We're not very good, obviously, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my pick. I, I took. Uh, I can't remember what this, what the spread was. Maybe twelve, thirteen, and I was like. Yeah, Penix went down. Wisconsin, they lost last week. They should be on a rebound. They're you know out for vengeance. And so you know, I was like, yeah, I'll take Wisconsin. And boy, was I completely wrong. Real. <laughs> Just looked like an ugly game. I know um, mm -hmm. Mertz. Mertz had a pick. Didn't throw. I think he threw for right at 200 yards. The Tuttle kid came in for Indiana and, and did what he needed to do. Nothing super, but threw for two touchdowns. You know, again, they they beat Wisconsin 14 to six. To tell you how bad we are, the last three games Wisconsin's played. Indiana held them to six points. Northwestern held them to seven points. Michigan held them to 49 points. <laughs> that's, that's unreal. <laughs> that's just, that's that's just crazy. That's just I, I read that stat and I just I laughed and then I cried a little bit. <laughs> but the big one in the Big Ten, Ohio State getting back at it, went into East Lansing and just curb stomped Michigan State 52-12. to 12. Um, You knew they were going to come out hungry, especially with, with all this talk about, you know, if they don't get – Two more games in, they're not going to be able to go to the championship game, which I'm already hearing rumors that. Oh yeah, I read it too. All right, it's like uh, this, <laughs> this is our baby. Now, if, if that was, I'm sure if that was an Indiana team or a Wisconsin mm -hmm. team that was in that position, they probably wouldn't be trying to change the rules. But you know, I mean, Buckeyes are a brand, man. They're not just a team; they're a brand. They get ratings. People want to see them in there. I still, personally, not not because it's the Buckeyes. Yeah. I would say this about yeah. anybody, but. With, with six wins, other teams are playing 10, 11, 12 games. I don't think with six wins, I don't think it's fair to put them in. And I would say that even if it was Michigan. 
I really would because I just, you know, A, yeah. the, the competition they beat, I know you can only beat who's put in front of you. And unfortunately for Ohio State this year, the Big Ten's down. And, you know, the one good team they beat was Indiana, and they gave up a lot of points to them. Um, but they came out this week, man, and like I said, they steamrolled over Michigan State 52-12. to 12. Had a couple guys rush for over 100 yards, including Fields, who had 13 carries, 104 yards, two TDs. He was 17 for 24 through the air, 199 yards, two TDs. Uh, Lombardi for Michigan State got hurt in that game. I think he only played a, a few series. He ended up 5 for 11, 33 yards. But, you know, Michigan State's bugaboo all year has been the turnover, and they had four more in this game. Of course, against Michigan, they had no turnovers. Zero. Yeah, of course. That so, makes perfect sense. But, they, you know, Michigan State's they're not a good football team. The fact that they came into Ann Arbor and beat Michigan is just – it's a disgrace. I mean, they're 2-4 and four on the yeah. season. Right. It just shows you, you know, you, you say that you said it correct. You know, they're not a good football team. And for them to come in and, and just destroy us, I'm not going to say destroy, but they handled, they beat us by three, but still they beat us. And it just shows you, you know, the disarray that Michigan's in right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like I said, man, it, it's kind of contradictory what I'm going to say because do I think Ohio State's one of the four best teams in the, in the country? Absolutely. But, do I think at this point they should be, especially with the game this week, I've read it's pretty pessimistic that the game's even played. Um, so especially if this yeah. game isn't played and they end up you know, doing something next month and, and, and go 6-0, I mean, I, I don't feel how you can put them above Florida or Texas A&M or even someone like Iowa State who has two really big wins. I, I don't know, man. I know it's, you know, again, I think they're one of the four best. But at that point, with, with only six games under your belt, I just don't think that's fair to the teams who have played 10, 11, 12 games. Yeah, I completely agree. And with everything you just said, you know, it's, it's hard because do I think they're one of the best teams in the country? Absolutely. You know, just like you said. But it would be hard, say, you know, if they only play five, six games to, to put them up in there. And I really think, and I, I can't remember if we talked about this before or not, but the – the NCAA, they just – they shot themselves in the foot when they did this whole four-team goes to this, you know, playoff thing. They should have just come out originally and began with eight teams because that gives you, you know, one championship from the from the Power Five Conference. It gives you an independent who may have a super good season. And it gives you a couple of these other teams who just have these super seasons and – you know, or put their name in there to be able to go and, and play for a championship or even another like SEC team who may have lost in the SEC championship. That's the only game that they lost. Mm-hmm. I just, I feel like they just completely screwed that whole system when they only made it four teams. It should be eight teams. It's one extra week and, and be done with it. Cause it's for sure. You're going to have the best team in the nation in your top eight. No doubt in my mind. Right. I was watching a game. I can't remember what game I was watching this weekend, but they were like, you know, um, if if you're a non-Power 5 school, this is your chance to make it this year. If you can't make it this year, you're probably never going to make it as long as the system is like it is. Because you got somebody like, you know, Cincinnati who's a non-Power 5 school, and they're they're playing well, 8 or 9 and 0. You know, they do they deserve to jump up in there? Maybe. I mean, Coastal Carolina is undefeated. They played maybe the game of the day. Beating BYU, which I don't—if you didn't see that, man, you need to try to find a replay. I of that. didn't. The ending of that was just fantastic. Um, I, I think that knocked that knocked the uh, the BYU quarterback out of Heisman talk. I think he didn't have a very good game there, but mm. just a, just a fantastic game. Um, but yes, yeah, so you have guys that are kind of hanging around that aren't typically there. You know, again, I touched on Texas A and M. They they beat Auburn pretty handily to move to seven and one on the year. You know, they're uh, Florida's right behind them at eight and one. Florida, you know, mm-hmm. beat Tennessee handily. Florida's only loss is to number five A and M. Florida's playing well. The only thing that hurt or that scares me there is Florida's running game. They got to get that a little bit on track and 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 uh, take some of that pressure off Trask. But I'll tell you what, man, Trask threw for four hundred thirty three more yards and four touchdowns. And, I mean, this dude's just balling out of control. I think that kind of solidifies his lead as the Heisman. Uh, front runner, but Mac Jones for Alabama, 385 yards and four touchdowns himself. Um, yeah, man, it, it's 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 fun right now. It's going to be interesting once everything shakes out. And typically, you know, in the past, we're always talking about this before everything happens. 
but it usually works itself out. Even though there's only four teams, it really works itself out at the end with championship games. But this year, yeah. just being a little bit different with certain games being canceled, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's just a little bit different this year. Absolutely. I mean, this year is just, it's crazy. It's, it, you take what it is. Um, there's a lot going on with, with sports in general, we're talking football. You know, I'm sure basketball is probably going to be crazy the same way. But it's just a, I don't know. I mean, for the most part, yeah, your your people, your your championship team is probably going to come from the top four. And like you said, it usually does work itself out. I just have a hard time when it comes to, like, like I say, you know, your SEC teams, when you've got Florida at their, you know, at their high and Alabama and, and Georgia and some of these teams, when you take two SEC teams and go to the championship SEC game, and one of them has got to lose. So does that should that completely knock the other one out? Like just completely out of a championship talk? It, I just I don't agree with it. I won't ever agree with the way they have the setup. Mm-hmm. Um, and until they change it to eight teams, it's, it's just not going to make me happy. Sure, and that's understandable. I think a lot of people are that way. Um, but I think this year with you know the SEC isn't as strong. Obviously LSU is way down. Alabama put up 55 on them, you know, 55, 17, but really you're only, I mean, you got A&M, you got Florida, Alabama, I guess Georgia, well, heck man, they got, they still have four teams ranked in the top 10, but Georgia's right. Georgia, you know, Georgia always finds a way to kind of, kind of, yeah, they'll figure it out how yeah. to, how to mess it up. But I really like Florida right now. I think Florida, Alabama in the SEC championship game. I mean, if Florida went in and beat Bama, say, you know, 35, 31, right. Both teams have one loss. I think exactly. you still. I think you still have to put them in over an Ohio State team, just because you know they would have played eleven. I think eleven games, twelve games, and both been in the title game. Is it fair? It, no. I mean, I know again, it's it's contradictory what I'm saying, but I just don't uh, yeah. Think, I, I don't think that's I enough. It's not six games is not enough. It's it's not fair to those you know those kids who played eleven, twelve games, and it's not it's not Ohio State's fault. Because, again, I think they're one of the four best teams. I think they're probably one of the three best teams in the country. Um, I agree. I agree. And, and again, you know, I, I really hope that next week's game can be played mm-hmm. because, for one, I want to see Michigan out there playing ball. Yes, are they going to get their butt kicked? I'll give. I'll throw a 99% chance on that being <laughs> a, a positive. But I still want to see them play. And Ohio State team, should they deserve to go out and be able to play that game and prove what they can do and be able to play in the Big Ten championship game and in turn, you know, go on further and hopefully have enough games and enough in their repertoire to be able to say, hey, you know, we won the Big Ten. This is, you know, we should be able to be in the top four and and play for that national championship. Right. Did you see they deserve that? Of course they do. I agree, man. Did you see the, um, the line for the game yet? No, uh, but if I had to guess, it's probably going to be way lower than what it should be. <laughs> I would say it's probably in the probably somewhere near twenty five. It that is. Am I close? It's ranging from thirty to thirty and a half. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I, I would still probably I would I need more points. <laughs> right, I'm a betting man because that you know I mean yeah, I hate to say this but. You know, we beat Michigan or Michigan State beat us, what, 27, 24? Was that right? I think 20, 27, 24, 20, I think it's right. Yeah. And they go in and they throw 52 on, on <laughs> Michigan State. And uh, it's just going to be ugly, man. I mean, they're, they're going to be able to pick <laughs> apart our defense. They're going to run it down our throat. And they're, our offense is not going to have enough to, to even throw up. Maybe fourteen. I, I hate to say this. I know we're, I'm skipping ahead in the, in the in the cast, but Adam said, "Holler at me when you know it's time for the pick." Uh-huh. And I said, "Well, I tell you what. In the meantime, go ahead and get you two buckets." <laughs> I said, "In one bucket, put all the numbers from zero to fifteen in, and the other numbers from fifty to a hundred." I said, "You pick one number out of each bucket." 
And those are probably going to be close to your score right there. <laughs> I hope I hope he's doing that. I hope he's in there cutting cutting the <laughs> numbers out from a book and throwing them in the bucket. Maybe yeah, that's I'm, what I should have done. I'm with you. And there's rumblings now. I don't know if you've heard. There, there's rumblings of, of Harbaugh and a, and a three-year extension. Um, I saw – uh, <laughs> Man, I, I don't know. I mean, it, <laughs> oh, I, I saw that, and it kind of shocked so me. So if they keep him, do they do – they, Go away from Don Brown. Yeah, I, got us. I, I think mean, they do. I think. I think. Do, do they, they pull the uh, the Notre Dame? You know, Brian Kelly. Hey, we're just going to fire everybody under the head coach. Yeah, I, honestly, I think so. I think uh, one of my big things is, and we haven't really talked about him much, but I think one of my one of my big pieces that I want to see gone is his son. I think Jay Harbaugh, as the running back coach, is not doing these guys any favors. I would love. I mean, you got Mike Hart over in Indiana right now. He's like, you know, he's all time leading Killer. rusher. As a running back in your school, and he's coaching for a, for a rival now. Like, yeah, what is and that? He's doing a good job. He's doing a great job. Bring him over. Let him coach the running backs. Get rid of Jay. They got to get rid of this recruiting coordinator. And we'll talk again. We'll talk some more about recruiting. I I delve you know dove into uh, some recruiting stats here that I want to I want to talk to you about. But yeah, I think I think if they keep him, it's got to be a mass exodus of everybody else. Um, and sure. I don't I don't. Well, there's know no if, other way. I don't know, you know, who knows if it's rumors or not, because you also see rumors of him eyeing jobs in the oh, NFL. Yeah. But these have been going on for six years now. Um, the only thing they that makes have, me... but the, the, really is the difference there is the fact that he's getting destroyed up there right now, mm-hmm. and you you would expect, you know, oh well, he's not doing good, so he's going to leave. It, it just seems like this year more than the, the last few. It, it's really, really, uh, you know, hitting hard when it comes to the, the rumors of him leaving. The only thing that makes me think that the extension might be true is Andrew Anthony Jr., the, the wide receiver that is kind of Michigan's re- recruiting. He committed to Michigan, um, but they were afraid he might jump to Michigan State because he's from East Lansing. He actually tweeted out today, in Harbaugh we trust. So I'm thinking, man, does he know something? Has Harbaugh already got word of, hey, we're going to extend you, and he's reaching out to these kids and letting them know? Um, again, I I can't say I'm happy about it if – the only way I would be okay with it is if, like I said, if they just clean house and bring in new coordinators. Um, watching these games the other night, man, watching Florida play, it's like, dude, it's so easy. It's just pitch and catch for these guys. Now, I know they have, you know, they have more experienced receivers, better receivers, big, huge guys. Pitts, Kyle Pitts, Kyle Trask, that duo's might be. Oh yeah, that's, that's if tough. they're if they're not the first best duo in the country, they might be second after. Um, Devontae Smith and Mac Jones from from Alabama. Did you see what Smith did this weekend? Huh. He had like 219 receiving yards in the first half. Uh, I think he ended up with 231, but I saw his stats for the last four games, right? The last four games, he's got 35 catches, 749 receiving yards, and 11 touchdowns. Wow. Isn't that That's- amazing? We don't even yeah. have a receiver with – with close to that <laughs> yards, quarter, maybe, right? And it, it, just unreal. And I saw today. I was watching the Browns game, and Donovan Peoples Jones caught a seventy-five yard touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. Of course, he dropped a wide open pass for a touchdown yeah. first. But they said today the ninety-two yards. And his kid's a five-star recruit coming to Michigan. The ninety-two yards today were the most receiving yards he's had since high school. Wow! How does that happen? <laughs> I don't know. It's that's just insane. But yeah, man. So I I don't know with with Harbaugh. Does he get the extension? Does he not? I'll tell you. I watched the Iowa State West Virginia game specifically. You know, for Matt Campbell. Uh, man, I'll tell you that was obviously. You know, I'm look, sure. I'm sure. Did you DVR that one? I know you you like to watch the Mountain. I did. Yeah, I just haven't had a chance to watch. It. I'll probably watch it tonight once we get done. Do you know what happened in the game? Should I not tell you anything that happened? Uh, well, I, I know they got beat, and it was not pretty. Correct. I, I, you know, I have not seen. I, I did see the final score. Obviously, it's hard, you know, when, when I live down here. And mm-hmm. 95% of the people I have on my Facebook are, are Mountaineer fans. So, of course, everyone's, you know, thro- throwing up their, their two cents worth and opinions. And, of course, you know, I, I see the score. So, I'm like, yeah, okay. I but, really, yeah, with that score, it, it couldn't have been pretty. I really like what Matt Campbell's doing there. And I know he's, you know, a lot of people on the Michigan boards really want him to come to Ann Arbor. And I wouldn't be upset with that. I know he runs no, a lot. Of, no. He runs a lot of, you know, 
tight end motion, things like that, which was a staple of hardball for a while. Exactly. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I mean, it was huge on, t- you know, two tight end sets and, uh, you know, running an eye form and, and putting them out wide. It just, I mean, there for a couple of years, we had some really good tight ends. And then I, I don't know what the heck happened. I don't know if it was just the play calling with Gaddis coming in and, and the, the change in um, the offensive coordinators with, with you know, the, the difference that he wants. Mm-hmm. But it's really been a big change because you don't hardly see the eye form anymore. And we haven't this year. I mean, even when we need, you know, it's fourth and one and we need one yard, God forbid we, we, we go eye form and under center and, and, you know, maybe, maybe pick up three feet. Yeah, that's blasphemous right there. That, you know, watching, <laughs> watching Iowa play too, or Iowa State, I'm sorry, is seeing Brees Hall, man, watching that kid run. That's one thing. If you go back and watch that game, focus on his patience. I've never seen a running back at that level with more patience than this kid. You know, he'll wait, he'll chip away a yard, two yards, loss of a couple yards, one yard, two yards. Then all of a sudden, 25 yards, 30 yards. Uh, he ended up with less than 100, but he still ended up with about four and a half a carry. And again, they didn't need it. They didn't need him to, to come through because they they just they put it on West Virginia. Just yeah. a, a good show. And Campbell's really on the upswing. He's going to be playing in the in the uh, Big 12 championship game with – uh, or against um, Oklahoma, which should be fun, super fun to watch. Yeah, because um, they've already beat them once, right? They have. I, I think yeah. Oklahoma will get their revenge because I think Oklahoma's I'm playing. I'm sure. You know, they're kind of pumping on all cylinders, even though they struggled a little bit with Baylor yesterday. Uh, but they, they ended up pulling it out. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but, yeah, man, I want to see. Hopefully the game will be played. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some news about Harbaugh one way or the other. Again, I think we're on the same boat as – Whatever happens, happens. But I think if he stays, you gotta you gotta clean house and uh, yeah. And go Obviously, there's got to be some kind of change going on. I mean, you cannot continue to keep the same people. That, I mean, look at this year. You can't keep the same personnel up there that you have this year and expect different results. I mean, I'm gonna switch into something different. Since there was no game, we're not gonna discuss the game. I, I went through. You know, people are like always saying, oh, recruiting doesn't matter as far as recruiting, star, number of stars, oh, that doesn't matter, it's how you develop. And I agree to a certain extent, but you also got to have those high four-star, five-star kids. It, it equates to winning, you know? Yeah, uh, it's potential, I, you know? Absolutely. You take a five-star, you take a, you take a four-star with, with good potential and good coaching, and you can, you can make them a five-star. But if you take a, a five-star strictly on talent level, but without being able to teach them how to really play the game and the you know all those little intricacies that they don't know yet, that's the difference between a four star that's that's being able to be coached well and a five star that's not. Right. Okay. Now, for for the you know the sake of comparison, obviously I, Michigan's not on the same level as these other three teams. But I took, the, in my opinion, I took the three best teams in the country over the last six years since Harbaugh started, and I put Michigan up against Clemson. Alabama and Ohio State, just to kind of get a feel of, man, these teams win. Where has their ratings been as far as you know, four stars, five stars, overall ratings as a team, national, you know, national rankings, things like that. So, uh, this is going to be a little long winded. So, kind of give me a minute, but I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through Michigan's first, and then I'll you know I'll hit you with the other three. Sound good? I'm ready. All right, man. So in 2015, when Harbaugh came in, obviously he comes in late. You know, it's it's not going to be a great class because he's coming in having to try to get kids that, you know, he don't know that don't know him. So they finished right. 37th nationally, right? Of course, zero. Yeah, but still not bad. Right, right. Zero five-star recruits. They had, uh, I think they had 14 four-star recruits in that class. 2016, he bumps that up to number eight nationally, second in the Big Ten, pulls in one five-star recruit, has 26 signees. Was it Gary? Uh, no, not yet. He's a couple years later. Okay. Okay. I couldn't remember the timeline yeah. there. 2017. Um, actually, you know what? That might be, that might've been Gary. He was either 216 or 2017. Yeah, I couldn't remember. But 16, he goes from number eight nationally. 17 comes up to number five nationally. Second, in the big 10 signs two five-star kids. I think that was when he got, um, it's running back green, wasn't it? No, I th- I'm thinking 2017 was Peoples Jones and Aubrey Solomon, maybe. Okay, 16 may have been Green actually, because he was there and then he transferred out. 
what a bust that was. Um, Cheryl. Okay, so it's 2017, number five nationally, two five stars, had 30 signees that year. 2018 dropped off tremendously, 22nd nationally, dropped a third in the Big Ten, no five star recruits, 20, 20 overall signees. 2019 bump, 2019 bumped back up to number eighth nationally, actually finished first in the Big Ten, signed two five star kids. That was in, yeah, that was in 19. What was overall? Had, overall, they were eighth in the nation. Uh, the amount of people. Okay. Oh, the, the, yeah, the overall total was 26 that year. Yeah, I was thinking that the year before, I mean, they only signed 20, so that's probably a huge, mm-hmm. you know, big difference in just the sure. amount of, uh, of kids that they signed. Absolutely, absolutely. 2020, they finished 14th nationally, second in the Big Ten. Again, no five-star recruits, and they had 23 total total signees. So in the six years that Harbaugh has been there, he signed 139 kids, right? Out of those 139, 77 have been four stars or better. So 55% of the kids he's brought in have been four stars or better. So that means 45% of those guys he's bringing in are three stars and lower. Again, man, you can find those those diamonds in the rough, those three stars that you can make into you know four and five star, but it kind of equates, man. His total record at Michigan's 49 and 22 over those six years. So 55% of the class was four star or better. All right, next I'm going to throw at you OSU. Okay. So in 2015, Ohio state was seventh nationally. They had one, five star, 14, four stars, and they signed 26 kids. 2016, they were fourth nationally, one, five star, 17, four stars, signed 24 kids. 2017 finished second nationally. Five five-star recruits, 14 four-stars, signed 21 kids total. 2018, same, second nationally, signed three more five-stars, 24 stars, and had 26 kids. So 23 of the 26 were four-star or better that year. Just just unreal. 2019, 2019, they finished 14th nationally because they had a smaller class. They had still had three five-stars, nine four-stars. 17 total signings 2020 they saw they finished fifth nationally signed three five stars 14 four stars out of 25 total you know out of 25 total kids so in that six-year span they signed 139 kids 104 of those were four star or better so that's 75 percent and their record over that six-year span 66 and seven (laughs) <laughs> it's insane. Right? So next we'll go with Clemson. Cle- the Clemson's class has kind of shocked me. They were actually a little bit a little bit worse. I would than say less. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Which is which is kind of shocking to me because they have the best record of all of these. Uh 2000, yeah. 2015, they finished ninth. They signed three five star kids, nine four star kids out of a twenty four total man class. Two thousand sixteen, they finished eleventh, had one five star, twelve four stars out of a twenty one person class. 2017, they finished 16th, had two five stars, eight four stars out of a 14 man class. 14? 14, yep. Out of. Oh, that's uh, tiny. I know, right? They have a couple tiny ones in a row. The, the next year, they finished seventh nationally. They signed five five star kids, seven wow. four star kids out of a 17 man class. And that's the year they went 15 to 0. Um, 2019, finished 10th nationally. One five star, 12 four stars out of a 29 man class. And 2020 finished third nationally. They signed five five star kids, 12 four star kids out of a 23 man class. So over those six years, Clemson signed 128 kids, 77 of which were a four star or better. So that's only 60% of the kids are four star or better. So that shows me right there that it's coaching, man, because Harbaugh signed 55%. <laughs> Clemson's doing this, and over that six-year span, 78 wins, six losses. Yep. Isn't that Completely. crazy? It's... And, yeah, they play in a little bit, you know, a little bit worse conference. The ACC is not great. I get it. But they're winning games in the playoffs. They're winning national titles. 
Like it's just, it's just insane. I'll finish up with Alabama. Okay. Alabama, obviously it's ridiculous. They finished number one, four times over the span as far as recruiting goes, but 2015, they were first, they had six, four star, I'm sorry, six, five star kids, 14, four star kids out of a 24 man class. 2016, they were first again, three, five stars, 13, four stars out of a 24 man class. 2017, first again, so three years in a row there, and they might have been first in 14. I didn't go back that far. But so 2017, first in the nation, six five stars, 18 four stars out of a 29 man class. 2018, they fell off a bit. <laughs> they were fifth nationally. Oh, <laughs> darn, darn <Right>. a lot. <laughs> Two five stars, 12 four stars out of a 21 man class. 2019, back up to that number one spot, three five star kids. 23 four-star kids. So in that class, out of 27, 26 were four-stars or better. And finally, 2020, they were they ranked second. They had four five-star kids, 17 four-star kids out of a 24-man class. So in the six-year span for Alabama, they signed 149 kids. 121 of those were four-star or better. 81% of their kids wow. are four-star or better. And they had a record of 75 and six. So tell me, star coaching matters, but stars absolutely matter. You know, you know, you're going oh, out there you're getting the best kids. They already have a, a leg up on the competition by being the, you know, the best of the best. So those people who are all oh, JJ Watt was a three-star kid. Okay. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's cool, man. You can put one bullet in a gun and spin it and click it, you know, five times and not, <laughs> bullet right. not come out. Right. You know what I mean? There's always going to be that one or two people, you know, per class that really surprise you. But man, stars matter. Coaching matters. Over the, yeah, over, I can put, yeah. Over that six year span, man, those three teams, OSU, Clemson, and Alabama, are a combined two hundred and nineteen and nineteen. Yeah, that's insane. Right. And I completely I mean, I completely agree. Yeah, obviously, you know, we talk you can talk about sitting here and talk about stars and sitting here and talk about coaching, but you gotta have both. You have to have the raw talent that is there. And you have to have the coaches that can come in and take these kids and coach them up and teach them, you know, to, to go on, teach them what they need to know to be able to, to go to the next level. And not, not only just to go to the next level, but be good at the next level. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's what those teams, you know, the other three teams you just mentioned, that's what they have right now. And I just feel like it's not in Ann Arbor right now. It is not there. It's not. You, it's, there's something like like they came out and said, man, it's it's a cultural issue right now. And one thing, one of one of Matt Campbell's players, I can't remember, it might have been Brees Hall. He came out and said, look, here at Iowa State, man, it's a five a five star culture versus five star talent. You know, here we we have that five star culture. We might have two and three star kids. I think they only had like they only have like three or four, if that, four star kids at Iowa State right now, you and they're you know they're playing well, but. You gotta have you gotta have the right culture. You gotta have the right kids. You gotta have the right coaching. Yep, I completely agree. It, it, it's all gotta work together to you know, one's gotta complement the other. Exactly. So I, I just found that interesting. I thought, man, I'm gonna go oh, through yeah. here. I'm gonna see what what it's been like since Harbaugh got in there, and it was really just my goodness, what an embarrassment of riches. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, for the 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 people around here in Columbus, man, it's how do you not? get excited about losing seven games in six years <laughs> seven games that's just that blows my mind but anyway you know football wise man you got any more anything else as far as the football side of it if not we'll jump nice, into sir. let's go ahead and jump like I said, in. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to watch much football at all this week so uh we can roll right on yeah let's jump into to michigan basketball good week played uh on wednesday night beat Ball State, 84 to 65. Um, I really, that game, I really liked what I saw from Franz Wagner stepped up. He was more aggressive. He yes. still, still didn't shoot much. I think he was only four for six from the field, but he's pulling in rebounds. I think he had 14.6 rebounds. I really liked that. I liked, you know, he's got to get a quick start. I feel like he almost gets a little lost in the shuffle if he doesn't start quickly. That makes he sense. He does. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember I sent you a message the other day. I think after the after the game was over, and I was like, you know, I I really, you know, I like from from top to bottom. I really like this team. I mean, they may not be flashy, and they may not 
be the best out there, but I really enjoy watching them. They're mm-hmm. aggressive. The, you know, I don't, I can't really pinpoint what it is. I remember I texted you and I was like, man, these guys are fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like you said, Vogner, really huge difference in, from the first few games to this one, or well, from the first two games to, to Wednesday's game. And, uh, you know, really big showing there, 14 points and six rebounds. But it was, it was more than that. He, he really, his presence, I mean, it was just, you could tell it was a difference when he was on the court. Exactly. Livers played well. Livers had 21 points, three rebounds. I think he was eight for 11 from the field. That mid-range jumper, man, he, he's he got a beautiful mid-range jumper, and it was on that game. So that was nice to see him kind of, you know, continue with, yeah. with his fast start for the year. Uh, Hunter Dickinson, man, 12 points, 11 rebounds, his first double-double. This kid is legit. The game completely changes when this kid is in the game. It's it's. I, think I completely it, agree. I think it's a matter of time before they they flip flop him in Austin. I mean, Austin started. I do. Usually plays three to four minutes. Uh, and Austin Scrappy, I think maybe one of the reasons they start Austin, they don't want to get Hunter in foul trouble early. You know, young kid coming in maybe a little too aggressive, kind of ease him into it. Uh, but I maybe I, but. I don't really feel like he does. I don't really feel like he gets into foul trouble. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. I mean, he's, you know, you, you say that, but from what I've seen of him, I mean, he's, he's a pretty clean player. I mean, he's not one that's going to jump into someone if, you know, he'll post up and he'll, he'll throw his arms up, but he stands stationary. He doesn't, mm-hmm. he doesn't move. He doesn't do those stupid fouls to get himself into that position. Um, but I agree. I think it's just a matter of time. And maybe because he's a freshman, uh, you know, Davis is a senior. Um, I, th- I just think it's a matter of time before Dickinson takes over that that start. You know, in tonight's game, what I did see, and I might be jumping ahead, it was almost eight minutes before Dickinson came in the game. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not taking anything away from Austin Davis because, he, you know, the kid goes out there and he gives it, and, you know, everyone says, oh, this guy, he'll give it 110% every game. I'm pretty sure that Austin Davis gives it about 180% because he <laughs> – I mean, we've talked about it, but he just – it's like he goes over the top. Yeah. There, with I, his effort. And, I played – Go ahead. I love to see it. I love to see the, you know, the enthusiasm and the, him going out there and giving everything he's got. But there are some times I'm like, dude, you need to calm down just a little bit. I played with a guy – I won't mention his name, but I played with a guy in junior high and high school a little bit. That oh, it wasn't me then. <laughs> no, no, that, he would do that. He would like he would almost over hustle. I know that sounds weird, but he would like hustle after balls that clearly you weren't going to get to, like <laughs> going and diving out of bounds on a ball that's already out of bounds. It's like, are, I get that you're trying to maybe hustle to make up for your lack of talent, and I think Austin does that quite a bit. Don't get me wrong, you should hustle, and I'm saying hustle in every play, but you you know what I'm saying? It's like a guy who makes a catch up against the wall and then jumps. Derek Jeter style, three feet into the bleachers that he didn't have to, he didn't have to do. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I agree. It, but, but I've been impressed, man. Davis has impressed me. He's he's played well. He's played calm. He's playing, you know, 14 to 16 minutes a game. Uh, he's, he's getting four to six points a game, getting a couple rebounds. I've been impressed. He's not shown me – I still – when he gets the ball underneath the hoop, if he dribbles, it's all over because he'll lose it every time. It's like, dude, yeah. just get it and go up with it. Anytime he puts the ball yeah. on the floor, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. he's got don't, even, the, <laughs> don't even do it. He's dribbling. Step and jump. <laughs> he's, got two, he's got two skillets. He's trying to dribble yeah. his skillets. I'm like, dude, that ain't working. It'd be like me out there. <laughs> but it was neat to see Mike Smith, too. He bounced back a little bit. I think he had 10 points. Uh, you know, he had that in a lot of foul trouble the game before. So it was good to see him come back out and, and have a pretty uh, – a pretty good game, yeah. but I agree. I, I really like him though. I, I'm oh, me too. Smith, he's, I tell you, it's just such a different, um, I mean, obviously, you know, with, with point guards, you, you've got those different types of point guards and him from Xavier Simpson, man, it's just completely, it's night and day. Like Simpson was a pass first guy. And I mean, I am not trying to take anything away from Simpson, but he had an ugly shot. Mm-hmm. He was, he was not a scoring point guard. He was a distributing point guard, plain and simple. Right. And Smith is the complete opposite. He he will distribute the ball, um, but he it's almost like he's got that, I'm going to score first, and if it's not there, then I'm going to pass the ball. Oh, yeah, he likes so to it's shoot. A, it's a, yeah, it's a big difference. And he has a much better shot than Simpson does. So it's a, it's a big change from, from you know, the last few years with Simpson at the guard to, to having Smith there. But I really like it. You know, I, I like what I see 
with uh, with Smith there. Me too. He's man. done a good job. Well, with that win Wednesday, you know, went to three and zero, but we dropped out of the top. And you're still out of the top twenty five. Yeah. So <laughs> today we go and uh, at home, still at home, uh, playing you know the the Knights of Central Florida. Man, I, the beginning of this game had me worried. Like they they got down by yeah. twelve early. I thought the well, length the length of UCF really bothered them. They weren't stopping the drives of the hole. UCF's length was just was hurting them. They were. It took them a while to kind of put everything together. But when they did, my goodness, dude, went on a fifteen zero yeah, huge point. huge change. Right. I think they went on a fifteen zero run in the first half. Um, and then in the second half, I think they went on a seventeen nothing run. So they had a they had a fourteen and I think a twenty, yeah. if I remember correctly. It, it, like you said, big huge difference. I, I was I, I did get to see probably three quarters of the game before I hopped on here. Um, the first ten minutes was just UCF. What really they they were super aggressive, mm-hmm. very aggressive, both on defense and offense. I mean, they were they were driving to the rim on offense, um, getting those layups. And on defense, you know, they were they were running that two 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 one zone, um, putting some pressure uh, on the inbound, which really threw you know took seven eight extra seconds off the clock trying to get the ball just across the half court. Right. So you know, you're working with a shorter shot clock um, when you when they did get the ball down there. So you throw that in with some rushed shots and just not shooting the ball very well at all. Um, and it was it was a very ugly first 10 minutes really and i think with what i looked at it with eight minutes left they brought this stat up with eight minutes left michigan has shot 42 percent from the field and they were one of eight from three point mm-hmm. that's that's terrible you know meanwhile ucf shooting like 11 11 16 11 16 yep yeah but but i mean you know Vog, like you said wagner tonight really he started off quick uh, attacking the rim good play but then he got into foul trouble so he had right. to go out um I, I really liked Shawnee Brown played pretty good um helping out as a actually as a guard I saw a couple plays where he had some really good passes uh getting the ball underneath but just that that UCF they really pushed the tempo they pushed they had pressure they were very aggressive and I really think it took you know, the good first half of the, the first half until Michigan could really figure it out and make a change. I agree. I think the whole game, the whole um, the whole momentum of the game changed when with Hunter Dickinson and Terrence Williams, when they came in the first half, man, yes. I think they both they both lit a spark. I think they both had maybe eight points at halftime. Terrence played really well, had a couple of nice drives, had a nice three pointer. But again, the whole complexion changes when Dickinson's in there. Man, he had another mm-hmm. good game. 14.7 rebounds. You know, Terrence chipped in with 10.6 rebounds. Uh, and Sean D, you talked about Sean D, man. I'll tell you, I really like this guy. He brings that, that he brings that little bit of fire. Um that, that hustle. He, he's got that the, hustle. he's very aggressive too. I love that. Dude, he can he can stroke it, man. There's games. Yeah. I feel like he's gonna be a, a really streaky shooter, but when he's on, man, he's on. This is two games this year where he's he scored close to 20. I think he was the he was the uh Michigan leader with 18 points tonight, and he just – there was a little crossover he did at the key uh, in the first half and had a little, I don't know, 18-foot jump shot that was just – I mean, this guy's got skill. Yeah, he loves – I wrote that down. He loves that mid-range, that, you know, that foul line, dribble in, two two steps to get the defender going, but then that, that little pull-up stop and, and jump at, you know, foul line. And he loves that shot. He's he, he can knock it down. That was good to see, you know, him scoring, Terrence scoring, Eli with ten because Livers had, a, a, you know, a crazy off night tonight. He only had five points. He did. Didn't, yeah. didn't score, was, and those were white. Those were white. I think with under six minutes left is when he finally scored his first two, and then he then he hit a three later on. But uh, but again, man, he's playing well. You know, he, he's all over the place. He had a nice block. I think he had seven rebounds. So just having him in there and having that threat, um, I like it. Again, you know, nice win, eighty to fifty eight. The only thing that really concerns me right now is their three-point shooting. They got yeah. – I mean, they had Terrible. so many open looks tonight. Uh, they ended up 9 for 27. Just – again, the open looks is what – it's not missing them. It's missing those open looks. And you're going to have nights like that, you know, but I, – I, Yeah, I saw a bunch where they had some – I mean, just wide open looks or three. I mean, they actually had time to, you know, <laughs> set their feet, bring the ball down, bring it up, and it's like, well, dude, you should drain that, and it bounces off the front of the rim or, or you know, 
one of them was air ball. I remember in which luckily Dickinson was there and, and took it right back up. But still, <laughs> I mean, if you're yeah. wide open, you, you've got to make the, the higher percentage of those shots. And even like you said, with, with the percentage tonight, uh, Wednesday's night, Wednesday night's game was ugly too. They were four for fifteen. It was only twenty seven percent. Yeah, even worse. You know, so and it's and it's it's rough coming from you know the, the beeline system for the last couple of years where we're used to shooting what 35 40 percent <laughs> maybe right. 45 50 percent on a on a night where just people were are, you know raining them down yeah so that and i'm sure you know a little bit more familiarity a little just get out there a little bit more more repetition you're going to start shooting better but 13 for 42 you know 31 percent over the last two games not great i'd like to see them up that to you know 37 38 percent or above um but I, I liked I liked what they're doing with the turnovers. You know, three games ago against Oakland, they had like twenty two oh, turnovers. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, it was terrible. I think Ball State they had thirteen, and today they only had ten against a really yep. good defensive, you know, uh, Central Florida team that, you know, Johnny Dawkins is known for you know having good defensive teams. So for them to yeah, only turn the ball, if you watch, yeah, if you watch it, you could tell. I mean, they were they had pressure the whole time tonight. So that's. Big, you know, it's it's tough when you're when you're playing well against that pressure to not turn the ball over. Like you said, I like what I'm seeing. Is this a team that's going to make a huge run? Probably not. Is it a team they that have, could? It could they? Oh, they absolutely, absolutely could. Absolutely. But I just you, I, yeah, I agree. You, I mean, they've got they're ten deep easily mm-hmm. um, on on any given night that uh, they could come out and just light it up. But it, it's just finding that combination of. You know, who's on the court and who's on the bench or could come off the bench mm-hmm. and, you know, throw up those points because it could be done for sure. Should be a fun season. And then, you know, especially with, with everything riding so high on next year, number one recruiting class coming in. So if this year's team can really, oh, yeah. really put something together, man, we might have a, a couple really good years in a row up there. And, you know, with Howard being who he is, man, hopefully this will just snowball and, continue getting those big time recruits but they're back at it again Wednesday against NC State that'll be a tough game you know that's NC State it's still NC State you know no matter no matter how they're doing this year again I, I don't know much about them right now but they're it's still always a tough game they've always played Michigan you know hard in the past um and then next Sunday you know we open Big Ten play with Penn State comes to Ann Arbor so it'd be nice to get into Big Ten play and see how I, I if I can see Hunter starting when Big Ten play starts I can see him you know, not I hope he does. He deserves it. I mean, he's 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 for sure shown that he can do it. Yeah, I, I really like his. I like his poise. I like I like you know he's got a good touch, man. That little floater that he had. Uh, he's got know, a great little turnaround. Yeah, turnaround right? float shot. He can shoot free throws. It. It's it's hard to find a big man who can shoot free throws. So yeah, nice to see him out there doing well there. But overall, man, again, should be a should be a good uh, good fun season. So. That's all I, I have agree. as far as basketball goes, man. Do we want to do we want to make predictions for next week? Do we want to go ahead and and do that? You know, just in case the game is played, I can go get my buckets. <laughs> Grab those buckets, man. I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do a random number generator. Here. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do her. Why not? Hang on, let me let me grab Adam. We'll sure thing. We'll... <clears throat> Maybe he did. The buckets while we were talking. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go. I'll go ahead and go first this time. All right. Because personally, I think it's gonna be hideous. I really, I got a feeling it's gonna be one of those games where at halftime they've got the second string in. I hate to even say that, but it's just the truth of you know of what it is. Um, offensive wise, you know, we we don't have. We're going to have Milton in because I'm pretty sure Cade's still hurt, and that's if we play the game. You know, it's and defensive wise, we are not going to be able to stop anything <laughs> that they're going to be able to throw at us. Why I mean, would we I'm do just, that now, right? Yeah, I'm just speaking the truth. And, and what's funny is I'm probably going to say this, and they're just going they're going to come out with some sort of fire, and it's going to be one of those games where they're going to pull on my heartstrings, and it's going to be like a three point game. And, no, and they're going no, it's not. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, I, I really, honestly, we we don't have the talent. I'm not going to say we don't have the talent. We we have the talent level. We don't have the coaching, and we don't have the players in the right set of mind to be able to play with what they have in Columbus right now. 
So I really, they're going to run all over us. Fields is going to throw for at least 400, probably four to five touchdowns. Uh, you know, they'll run a couple, two or three in. Um, I, I'm going to say that they, yeah, my, my prediction is going to be 65 10. Yeah, I hate to even say that. Oh, by the way, we're going to lose. If that's what you were wondering. I mean, I know I threw the numbers out there, but <laughs> I think you could figure that one out, which direction I was going there. But yeah, that's my that's my prediction. Hey, what's up, Brent? What's up, buddy? Coming into this Ohio State game, what do you got? I know it's going to be ugly, but what do you got for this week if the game's played? Um, it's not going to be good. I'm just going to put it out there. Not going to be good at all. I think – is Milton starting? Uh, if the game's played, I think Cade was hurt and yeah. is still hurt. Didn't he have, like, something with his shoulder? Yeah, so I don't really know for sure. Oh, that's not good news. Coaching. Coaching just hasn't been there all season. That's just a fact. And they – other team, Ohio State, they've got Fields – is going to be a stud. And I'm just going to say 55, 10. Oh, wow. You're going, you're going 10 also. Yeah. Great to say. It sucks get, to say, but yeah. You're going higher or the lower than 10? Well, you know, man, I, I've heard I've heard rumblings that Milton might not even play. If this game's played, I've heard Milton's – I've heard a lot of transfer rumors already that Milton might be gone. Um <laughs> I've heard that starter this year. Uh, yeah, I, I don't mean gone. You know, currently, I mean gone right after the season. What? Uh, what's he hurt? Well, you know, he 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 was out of that game there a couple weeks ago, and when Cade started, they were talking about, oh, Milton's a little bit dinged up. But I think I don't know if there's some attitude issues from the rumblings I'm hearing. Um, but there were there's <laughs> there's rumors that they were even going to start Hassan Haskins in some kind of wildcat formation. I'm not even kidding. I've heard that uh, from different sources. Not that I have. Inside. All right, I'm just. If that's the case, I'm not. Watching <laughs> I also, I also heard that Dan Valari, you know, the the freshman quarterback, the third stringer, he might get a start. So, it's not going to be good, you know. Um, it's not. Gonna, it's not going to be good. But I guess I'll go. Prediction. Yes, prediction. Uh, yeah. What was that? That was my. That was my Mr. T. That was. Uh, uh. Rocky three, his prediction, no. his prediction was pain. So, pain. Yeah, that's that, <laughs> that was clever, clever is correct. He but, is 100% correct. <laughs> but, man, I'll tell you. I pity the fool. Oh, my goodness. And we are the fools. So hopefully, somewhere yeah. somebody is pitying us. But yeah. if, if this game happens, I think, honestly, I think there's maybe a 30% chance it happens. Um I, I, You know, with, with that big of an outbreak. I agree. I don't that's think they'll have it. I don't think they'll have it. But if they do, I mean, our, our DBs, we, we haven't shown all year that we can anything. stop anything. Um, I think maybe they come out a little harder, a little more inspired. You know, they want to come out aggressive for the first seven minutes, and then it's going to fall to heck. But I, I see, you know, I see if Ohio State wins the toss, I see them taking the ball, and I see them scoring on their first drive, and pretty much it will. So yeah, for sure. you know, I'm kind of with you, man. I'll say, geez, I hate to even say this. I'll say – I'll say fifty six. Gosh, I don't even. I don't even know if we get to double digits, but I'll say fifty six thirteen. Um, that's a, you're putting a lot on Nordine right there. That's that's two field goals. No man, I don't even know that he can make two field goals. I think he'll be trying. Or, wait. <laughs> <laughs> or does or does he miss an extra point? He probably. It's more likely that he misses an extra point. <laughs> then he makes. Then he makes two field goals. Let's be you're, honest. You're probably right. <laughs> Uh, and, and I think if, if we do score that thirteen, I think I think if we do score that thirteen, that one touchdown is in mop up time, you know, late in the game, maybe fourth quarter. You know, yeah, six, you're probably right. Left, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I don't think they'll play it, but do I hope they do? Of course. Do I think Michigan's yeah. going to lose? Of course. But you still, it's still your team, and you still want to see them play because you don't. You, you don't get many chances throughout the year, man. It's going to be another year till we see him play again after a couple of weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. So yep. you want to see him play as often as you can. And uh, it's just sad that we're at the point where, 
you just know what's coming. You know, it, it's not, there's no, there's no all, but it's still, I, the, the fans that you talk to, the, a lot of the Ohio State fans, oh, it's still a rivalry. This could happen. It's like, no, it couldn't, dude. Like, what are you watching? Again, I just gave you stats for the last six years. You've lost seven games. Like, oh, man, they had me a little worried. The, the first drive, okay, they had you worried on the first drive, and you ended up out <laughs> 63 to nothing the rest of the game. Like, come on. Right. Um, it's sad that it's, it's that point, but I don't see it changing anytime soon, man. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a culture change. That's why I think we need to have a – I think that's why we need to have a, a total overhaul again. I think it's I think it's time. I think Harbaugh's just he can't do it. There's some mental block. There's some culture issue. There's it, he lost that fire three years ago, four years ago, and it's just not there. He, it, I've never seen his teams come out more flat. I've never seen uglier offense ever. Again, I watch these SEC teams. I watch even I watch Coastal Carolina and BYU. It's like these teams move the ball up and down the field, and here we are going three and out, three and out, three and out. It's like, how does that happen? This is misery. Like, what? It's just frustrating. It's just sad. But, but again, I'll, I'll still support him, man. I'll still be there watching. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, I'm a glutton, I guess. But, uh, uh Gary, that's the same, same way. I'm right there with you. Well, man, let's just go ahead and wrap it up again until we, until we talk next week. Go blue. All right, buddy. Go blue. All right, man. We'll, uh, we'll go talk blue. To you soon. Hey, all right. I was hoping you'd chime back <laughs> in there. All right, guys, that was this week's episode. Again, as always, I thank you guys for listening. Me and Bub really appreciate it. We have a lot of fun on here each week talking. Hopefully, we can continue to garner more interest. Um, if you listen to the show and you like the show, tell your buddies about the show. It might not be for everybody, but even if you just pop in, give it a check out. If you don't like it, check back out. That's fine. But uh, give it a shot. See what you guys think. You know, Tell your friends about it. Um, but we really appreciate you guys listening. Heck, if nobody listens, it's fine. You know, we, we enjoy getting on here and just being able to, to talk football with each other, talk basketball with each other. So, anyway, those guys who do listen, again, we really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to enjoy the game this weekend. I know you Buckeye fans are probably going to enjoy the game more than, than us Michigan fans, and that's okay. You know, kudos to you. You guys are, uh, again, in my opinion, one of the top three teams in the country. Um, I think if you do get to play this game and then you go on and play the, the Big Ten title game, you'll be right there in the, in the playoff hunt. Um, so, hopefully, for your sake, hopefully the game goes on as scheduled. Uh, But again, guys, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with the 24th episode of Brent Ewing's Hey Buddy Podcast.